My videos show a lot of street scenes in Amsterdam, so I often get comments from people in other countries saying, Whoa, wait a second. What the heck is that? That is a microcar, and they're remarkably common here in Amsterdam. There are several different types of microcar in the Netherlands, but I'll focus here on the two I see most often. The most common is probably the Kanta, which is a Dutch vehicle, first produced in 1995. The Kanta is interesting because it has a special classification in the Netherlands as a handicap vehicle, kind of like a gas-powered covered mobility scooter. Because of its special classification, the Kanta is permitted to ride in the bicycle lanes and park on the sidewalks. Here's an example of a designated parking spot for a Kanta, marked with white pavers. I most often see them driven by elderly people, but there's an ongoing challenge of enforcement to prevent them from being driven by able-bodied people, taking advantage of their special status. Today the Kanta comes in several varieties. To me, the most interesting is this one, where the seat has been removed completely, allowing a wheelchair user to ride right inside. The typical gasoline Kanta costs about 14,000 euros new, but there are sometimes subsidies available. The Amsterdam municipality owns several Kantas that are made available to residents with limited mobility. So the Kanta is really a vehicle for people with disabilities, and they're not available or even desirable to most people. That is very different from the Bureau, which is jokingly called the Kanta for famous people. The Bureau is an Italian-designed electric microcar. It starts at about 15,000 euros and is mostly seen in wealthy neighborhoods as a second car for the family or as a corporate car, usually for real estate agents. I bet about half the bureaus in the whole of the Netherlands are registered in this one wealthy area in Amsterdam. But the other common vehicle in this neighborhood is the Range Rover, so I'm happy whenever someone chooses a bureau instead. So how small is a bureau? My first car in 2005 was a Smart 4.2. I was living in Canada at the time, and I remember how small the car seemed next to all the monstrous Canadian vehicles. And that was before the current fetish with large SUVs and pickup trucks in North America. But here's the size of a Smart 4.2 compared to a Bureau. Of course, microcars also look small because we're used to much larger vehicles. But it wasn't that long ago that some cars were this size. Now, watch a modern Mini Cooper drive by as a comparison. But despite its small size, the introduction of the Bureau has caused a lot of controversy. And because Amsterdam is more microcars than any other city in the Netherlands, they're dealing with these problems first. The Kanta was generally accepted because it was a vehicle for disabled people, but the Bureau is different. Bureau drivers have taken advantage of rules that were designed for Kantas, so a judge ruled last year that a Bureau is not a handicap vehicle. That means that the Bureau will need a license plate, the driver will need a driver's license, it will no longer be allowed in bicycle lanes, and it will need to be parked in a legal parking spot, just like any other car, though there are still some exceptions for disabled people. Still, it's better for the city, in many ways, if people are driving electric microcars rather than conventional cars, so Amsterdam is looking at ways to promote microcars as a viable alternative. The new rules allow bureau owners to buy a citywide parking pass, allowing them to park in any car parking spot in the city for a yearly flat rate fee. It'll be interesting to see if this provides enough incentive for people to buy a bureau instead of a conventional car. In the future, I'd like to rent a bureau and do a more in-depth review. Uh, let me know if you'd be interested in that in the comments. I find the objections to microcars in Amsterdam to be very interesting because they mirror the problems other cities face with vehicles that are a square peg in a round hole. In some cities, e-scooters are the square peg vehicle, clogging up the sidewalks and too dangerous to ride on the road. But in many cities, the square peg vehicle is the bicycle. There's nowhere to park them, so people lock them to trees and fences. They're too fast to ride on the sidewalk, but too slow to go on the road. And of course, the dangers caused by cars make them infeasible for most people. In the Netherlands, of course, the bicycle is not a square peg vehicle. It's a fully accepted and integrated method of transportation that is taken into consideration when designing the street. So, what might a city look like if it were designed with microcars in mind? Well, there actually is a city like that, Peachtree City, Georgia. It's a city that was designed from the start with a conventional road network, 
but also with a parallel road network entirely designed for golf carts. For example, here's a picture of one of their high school parking lots. And here's a picture of the Walmart parking lot. If you'd like to find out more, Tom Scott did a great video about Peachtree City that I'll link to below. That is a lot of golf carts. Unfortunately, a microcar would be too dangerous to drive in most of North America. The only reason they're feasible in the Netherlands is because there are enough slow, traffic calm streets in most built-up areas. Over the years, car companies have added more luxuries and safety features, increasing the size and weight of their vehicles. But while these features have made cars much safer for drivers and their passengers, the added weight and size has made them much more dangerous to pedestrians, cyclists, and people in smaller cars. These safety features are almost only necessary at high speeds, too. Even airbags are unlikely to deploy in crashes on 30 km per hour streets. And, of course, heavier cars are much less fuel efficient than lighter vehicles, regardless of how they're powered. I think it's worth thinking about how we want our cities to be. Do we really want everybody in two tons of metal in our city centers? Do we want them in cars at all, micro or not? At the very least, I believe our city should be safe enough to drive a micro car. Because if you're not safe in a little metal box, then you're definitely not safe outside of a metal box. Of course, some large vehicles will always be needed, but it's worth asking how many of the vehicles in our cities could be downsized. In the Netherlands, it's already common to see a range of light electric vehicles used for commercial purposes. And commercial electric cargo bikes are common as well. Ultimately, people and businesses should have a range of transportation options available to them, and cities should be encouraging those vehicles that have the lowest negative impact. So I think that in the modern city, electric microcars have their place. They're expensive today, but they'll come down in price. Kind of like how Tesla started by selling insanely overpriced cars for rich people, and now they sell regular overpriced cars for rich people. Microcars are a convenient way of getting around a busy city that's shelter from the elements, easy to park, and a great alternative for people with mobility issues. And while they probably shouldn't be in bicycle lanes and on sidewalks, they're generally much less objectionable than a regular car, at least to people walking and cycling. I would love it if everyone in the city could walk, cycle, or take public transit. But if someone is going to drive, I definitely prefer it if they drive a microcar. Because, as far as I'm concerned, the fewer large vehicles we have on our streets, the better. <laughs>